Hello everyone, welcome to another video for simusstamp.com. Today I will be sharing with you a card that I made using the stamp set that's included in the April 2024 card kit. And for my color inspiration for this card, I'm taking cues from the pattern paper that is included in the kit. This has a really eclectic mix of different styles and patterns and just different colors all throughout this selection of paper. And I was really taken by the color. So I thought I would use that as inspiration. So I picked out a few different colors of Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink that go well with the pattern paper. And then I'm going to prep my images for painting in a watercoloring style. So I'm first going to be uh, removing the stamps from the packaging. This is the Wild and Free Flowers stamp set. Such a fun stamp set. There's two really large floral images in the stamps and I'm going to be positioning both of them onto a five by seven piece of watercolor paper inside my Misty. And I've put a sticky mat inside there too so that I can have these stamps kind of bleeding off the edges of my watercolor paper. So I'm picking up the stamps with the door of my Misty, and then I'm going to prep that area with an anti-static powder tool, and then stamp the images and gold heat emboss them. I'm using the clear embossing ink that's included in the kit for all of my stamping. I'll just ink up all of those stamps and then close the door of my Misty and very gently press down on top of those stamps to get a clean impression. Now this is onto some watercolor paper that's a little bit textured. So I actually stamped the images twice so that I could get the best impression possible. So after I stamped the images a second time with that clear embossing ink, I then removed my watercolor paper from that sticky mat. And that's easy to do. You just bend back the sticky mat and then that watercolor paper should come right off. I use some gold embossing powder over these images and there is a gold embossing powder from Simus' stamp included in the kit. Um, I wasn't quite ready to uh, open up a new container of embossing powder. So I'm using Brutus Monroe Gilded, but that Simus' stamp gold embossing powder is a very comparable product and it is included in the kit for March, 2024. So after I uh, heat embossed and melted those first two images, I then stamped uh, one of the images a second time just across the top of my watercolor paper to fill out that space. So I hit it with my heat tool until everything was melted. And then I adhered my watercolor panel to a hardboard so that I can paint and not have to worry about the paper kind of warping or pulling up from the hardboard. So now I'm taking a slick surface. This is a palette from Art Impressions and I'm smushing down my ink pads for my five colors of ink. Um, I'm just smushing them down and creating like puddles of ink on my palette. And I'm going to be picking up each one of these colors and painting my project. So the first thing I did was I wanted to do a layer of color just to get me started. So I did just clean water across the entire surface and then I started dropping in color and I've sped up the video here so you can kind of see the process and it doesn't take too long. But basically the idea behind this technique is you're going to do an underpainting of color and then you'll be painting uh, more specific images on top. So this very first layer of color is all over my watercolor paper regardless of any lines of images. I just wanted that color going everywhere. I hit it with my heat tool and as I dried it with my heat tool, I made sure to not keep my heat tool in any one place too long so it would not remelt that embossing powder. I kept it moving. And once it was dry, I came in with a second layer of color and I just started building up the color on these images. I tried to make each petal uh, or each shape of the flower dynamic by having one color at one end of the flower petal and another color at the other end. So for here, I've got blue on one end, then I'm going to add in a little bit more of that galaxy color just to get some dynamic color blending. And I did that over here on this leaf as well. I started with the blue, the cadet color, and then I came in with the, the brighter pink, which is called rose. And I'm going to be blending those leaves 
uh, between those two colors. And you can add the colors on both ends and then wet your brush and bring in just a damp brush to sort of massage those two colors together. So the thing that I noticed as I was painting this is that even though the background color could be pink and maybe I wanted this flower to be pink, that it actually looked a little bit better if I used a more contrasting color right over the top. So for the areas where the background was pink, I did not do a pink flower over the top. And I initially had one flower that was like that, and you could hardly see the, like the definition of the flower. So you'll see here in a minute that I'm going to go back and fix that flower that I've already done. I'm adding in some more color, just dropping in that blue and blending it into the pink. So I decided to do some water droplets, and I'm just splattering that off the edge of an acrylic block. And I also smushed my ink pad onto that acrylic block and added water to get a little bit more paint going. And I did a few different colors. I used the purple and the pink and the lighter blue, just trying to get some little splashes of color. And then I cleaned up any areas that were kind of intense and then came in and picked them up with a paper towel. Now the positively saturated inks reactivate with moisture, just like distress inks do. So I actually splattered on some clean water and then used a paper towel to pick that up and it sort of bleaches the color. So here's that flower where I just wanted a little more def definition on top of that pink background. So I added the galaxy color right over the top on the edges of the petals and that really seemed to define the edges of that flower much much more so i'm going to let that dry and while it was drying i did my greeting so i decided to use the thinking of you greeting from the stamp set and i stamped it onto some smooth white cardstock this is nina classic crest solar white 80 pound cardstock I prepped the area with an anti-static powder tool and then stamped that greeting in that same clear embossing ink that I used before. I'm going to do this in the same gold embossing powder so that it matches the lines of my flowers. So I just tapped that on and then tapped off the excess, hit it with my heat tool until the embossing powder was smooth and melted. And then I went around the edges with a pencil and just sort of drew in an outline so that I can cut this out with my scissors. I do this a lot for images or greetings where I don't have a matching die. And I find that just using a pencil to go around those outer edges before I start to cut it gives me a better result. I think it makes the space around the image or the greeting look a little bit more even and I get a better result. So I just went around with that pencil and then cut it out with my scissors. So at this point, my watercolor panel was completely dry. So I removed it from my hard board, taking off that tape. And then I cut it down using Waffle Flowers A7 Layers dies. I wanted to make this a five by seven card and have a nice substantial margin or kind of mat that's in white around my very colorful background. So I used one of the smaller shapes and ran that through my die cutting machine. And then I took my clear embossing ink and went directly to the edges of my watercolor panel, adding that embossing ink just right on the edges. And then I dipped each edge into my container of embossing powder. Now, if you don't have your embossing powder in a container like this, you can dump some out onto a piece of paper, uh, dip your paper in, and then you can kind of fold that paper and funnel it back into the embossing powder container. Then used my heat tool to melt that gold embossing powder on the edges. This just gives it a really pretty finished edge, almost like adding a gold border to your uh, watercolor panel. I took a five by seven card base that was already folded and uh, scored and folded. And then I put some foam adhesive on the back of my watercolor panel and adhered that directly to my card front. I'm then going to take my greeting that I've stamped, heat embossed, and cut out, put some foam adhesive on the back, and then this nice spot right in the center where there isn't a flower was the perfect spot to put my greeting. So there's my finished card for today. I love how that gold shine comes through, and the colors are very reminiscent of my color inspiration. Everything I've used today, including the card kit and the stamp set, which is available outside of the card kit as well, um, and the inks, everything I've used is available at simusystamp.com. 
Thanks so much for checking this video out and I will see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.